Well, hello, and thanks for joining me here in my shop. We're going to go another step with the Marconi uh, radio here. This is a 201A because I've acquired some replacement tubes for the 6SA7 that's back here. But first, uh, a couple of observations are worth making before I uh, swap tubes and see what happens. Plus, when I go to swap those tubes, I'm going to want a very objective measure of the uh, quality uh, or, or the way the radio works afterwards. I don't want to rely on a, just a, a short wave signal coming coming in on the antenna, so I've got my signal generator ready. But first observation here, it's a little subtle. It's this screw and this screw. And I think you can see in the camera that uh, they're not the same. They're not the same type of screw. So, what's that saying? Um, it would be very unusual for there to be two different types of screws here right out of the factory. So, my guess is someone previously removed this plate from the radio. Perhaps this plate has even come from another radio, uh, identical radio. Maybe a couple radios have been put together here. I don't know. They've removed this plate, and when they went to put it back, they couldn't find the original screws. So they settled on a replacement. One of these two is a replacement. Maybe even both, for that matter. Um, that'd be my guess. I've certainly been in that boat before uh, myself. And that probably explains what all the crazy soldering is back back in behind here that we saw before, back, back in here. That was probably how the previous repair got this fitted on. So my guess is this is really soldered right onto the radio. Exactly why you would solder it, I don't know. Because these things are often just on with uh, force. In fact, I can see that this this is really odd. This pointer is definitely just clipped onto the shaft here. I, I could rotate it, the pointer, without rotating the uh, tuning shaft. So exactly what is going on, why somebody had to solder that stuff, you really got me. Solder the shaft behind here. So just some curious observations, kind of goes to the uh, story of the radio, but what we really want to pay attention to uh, now is this coil, this one in particular, and this tube. The reason we're concerned about the tube here, this is the mixer tube, and the mixer tube has to take in the local oscillator frequency. Um, on AM, that oscillator is running around uh, depending upon where it's tuned on the dial, 1500 uh, kilohertz. But on short wave, this is running all the way up to the top of the short wave band as high as 18 megahertz. Well, that's a huge difference between uh, 1.5 megahertz and 18 megahertz. That's a huge difference uh, from an electronic point of view. So it could be that this tube is uh, working just fine at the lower local oscillator frequency on the AM band, but when you go to try this on the uh, shortwave band, uh, perhaps the local oscillator is very weak at that point. So, uh, switching the tube with another tube, I, I've got, I, I managed to find three uh, replacements, three potential replacements, um, may bring the radio right back to life. On the other hand, this coil, as, uh, as I've seen earlier, has been fiddled with. It sure looks like it's been repaired after having a break on it, part of that repair, sir, uh, repair process can involve removing one turn of wire to provide the slack to make the new connection. And there certainly is slack in this little uh, coil here. So removing one turn, and there's not an awful lot of turns here to begin with, maybe 15 here. Um, no, that's a fairly significant change in this in this coil. So let's start by making some observations here. Just take a look. At, oops, take a look at that schematic. Here you see the two antenna coils, and it's this one. Transformers, rather, this one and this one. This one's the AM uh, antenna transformer, if I can call it that, and this one this one is the shortwave. And I know that because of the position of this capacitor on the AM coils. Here it is here. 
Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we got to fix something. So, thank you for your comments. A number of you have noticed I made an error in how I put this capacitor in. You know, wow, it's a great thing I do videos on this stuff, so people smarter than me can help me out of my uh, out of my problems. So, yes, I definitely I put this on the wrong spot. Boy, oh boy. Now, it gives me the eebie-jeebies to think about all the radios I repaired before uh, doing videos, and who knows what mistakes I made in those. <laughs> I didn't have anybody watching over my shoulder. The great thing is, I'm totally unaware of those mistakes, so I have not tallied them in my head. So I don't feel like a guy who makes mistakes all the time. But now that I do videos, I don't think I get away with much. That's for sure. So I'm going to reconnect this capacitor to where it should go. Award myself another duh. And uh, duh. We'll, uh, well, we'll go from there. After I move the capacitor over, we can uh, run the radio get sort of a baseline measurement, if you like, of how well the shortwave is working. And we'll start some more fiddling. if I would ever have noticed this error on my own. I bet you I would never have noticed it. Who knows? Another beautiful day here outside of Toronto. Pan Am games are going full tilt now. I have to take my hat off for the uh, great media that's going on about the Pan Am games. I'm, I'm being quite uh, sarcastic here. All the media can talk about in Toronto is stupid things like traffic trouble and uh, sort of all the, I don't know what to call it, the negative side of everything. You might have this fantastic sports, uh, sports uh, thing going on with the Pan Am games and uh, Everything's going fantastic, yet the uh, media in Toronto wants to make it sound like something's going wrong somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> boy, oh boy. Okay, let's fire this thing up. If you're watching this video two years from now, none of what I'm saying is making any sense anyway. Well, if, if you're not, if you're watching it concurrently, I hope you're watching some of the Pan Am games on your TV. Okay, so now I need to connect my signal generator here to the... Uh, well, let's hear it first for, uh, on a real antenna. Just in case now suddenly it's working perfectly. All set here. I think we're good to go. camera on during that last shot there, so apologize for that. There we go. You know, when I'm doing these live, there's no cut, cut, retake. It doesn't really happen, so if I blow it on the first time through, too bad. Okay. I think I'm on short wave. Let's Christ on the cross. 
familiar with or the corporate candidate is going to want to step up to the plate and, and assist you in your in your dreams and your desires and that's ultimately so it's you know the today's mediums the uh, social that exist out in all pretty good strength there on am que du soleil qui était derrière ça, il n'est pas étranger à hein, cette qualité euh, de, de, de la mise en scène, euh, de, de, en fait d'un peu tout. Là. Et même le... That sound is my uh, office computer on in sleep mode. You may have to pay your creditors some of the value of that vehicle if you want to keep it. So a car that's worth five or six thousand bucks, I guess... Okay, working. Pretty good there. We're going short wave. And turning the volume all the way up just to get a little bit of hiss in here. So I already know it's low. Way down around 7 megahertz here. That's totally the wrong place to be at this time of day. That sounds like a facsimile signal. The picture of something coming over uh, the radio. Same uh, signal from a different frequency, same program. something here um, just to try to to determine if this coil here is uh, could be improved upon and in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according pretty good to <laughs> so the last problem was my was of my making So what I'm going to do is I'm going to the gospel of your salvation. I'm going to change the uh, impedance of that coil by dropping a little bit of metal down inside. And just see if the radio gets louder. What are the chances? Toward redemption as God's possession to the praise of His glory. 
to get quieter. Let's get a bigger hunk of metal here. Quieter. Now, what's that really mean? What the heck was I really doing there? Um, trying to insert the piece of metal just inside the upper coil here and not into the lower coil. So, I'm affecting the impedance of the upper coil. It seemed to me all that happened was the radio got weaker, it didn't get any louder. Um, let's see. Now, I think really. It's time to go through the alignment process with this radio at this point. I'm not even so sure it's worth changing the uh, 6SA7 until after the alignment, and we know the thing is working as good as it can. So I think that's, I think that's what I'll do next. Do an alignment here. Give me a few moments so I get that all set up here. In fact, give me two seconds. Okay, so I've connected my signal generator to the grid number one on the 6SA7. Got a capacitor here uh, in series with the signal generator uh, lead. And the IF frequency on this radio is uh, 462.5 kilocycles. So let's see what happens here. Too fast. Whoops. There. That's the frequency there. Four. Oh, it's been tuned to 455. See, I need another connection in the radio, and that's to monitor the signal strength. I'm going to do it via the AVC, which I'm going to have to figure out here where to do that. Okay, so I've made the uh, signal generator connection, and this yellow wire is carrying the AVC voltage over to this, this meter here. I'll just take a peek on the schematic. So the, the AVC voltage is developed way back here uh, with this uh, diode arrangement here in the detector. And the AVC voltage is fed along this line, fed to the magic eye grid, the grid of the IF tube, IF amplifier, and to the grid through this long circuitous route to the uh, grid number, I suppose you would I don't know, signal grid number two, let's call it that, in the 6SA7, because this tube has two signal grids in it. So I've connected up right here, right, uh, right on this line here. And it doesn't seem to have drawn the radio down at all, so I'm happy with that. Let's see what kind of response we get. So I'll tune through the IF frequency up there, so make that a little more visible. And keep your eye on the meter down here. There we go. That's the peak. Now you see the frequency is four. 53 instead of the intended 462. Now that's not much of a difference. It really is not much of a difference. Uh, what it would do is it throw the dial off a little bit, but then the dial can be compensated for by adjusting the local oscillator frequency, bring the dial back into uh, into accuracy, and in the end that might work just fine. It might be just fine. But it's really supposed to be 465, 462 rather. Why don't we move it to 462? We'll put this the way it's supposed to be. If anything, we'll get slightly better 
tracking of the uh, dial. So don't need to listen to that very loud since we're using the AVC voltage here. We don't need to listen to the signal. Um, and what I'm going to do, let's see, can I get up here safely and do this? Um, yeah, I think I can leave everything just as it is. I'll just reach around the back here and uh, get at the radio from, from the back. Let's see. Yikes, that's pretty out of focus. There we are. So it's looking down on the radio now. And you know what? I still haven't found my favorite screwdriver. It appears to be lost. Isn't that a heartbreaker? I've had that for, uh, well, since I met my wife, because it's actually her sewing machine screwdriver. To use, uh, I'll have to use this guy here. So um, we're set to four. We're set to the wrong frequency. Here. Let's get this set right. Four sixty-two. There we are. And of course, my own frequency counter is a little off. Also, so I mean, it's off by one or two digits. So, but let's rely on it and start geeking. First one we should do is the second IF, the one that's further down the radio. The second IF, I'm just looking over here at the at the uh, information I have on the radio. Number two is the one in the center. Okay. I'm using a metal screwdriver. Um, even though you'd be told that's really a bad thing to do, often you can get away with it. Okay, so I'm watching the meter now. In fact, you know what? I think I'm going to put a close-up camera on the, on the meter here. Bear with me one second. Real good look at it. Okay. I can see it well too then. Okay, I'm getting the screwdrivers in. Here we go. Okay. And the next one. boost there. Let's go back to the first trimmer I did. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's right on. Okay, so that's the second IF. Now we'll switch to the first IF transformer. First trimmer. already maxed. Shouldn't have been. They should have all been tuned a little off to 455. I shouldn't be finding any of these right on. Here we go. The, the last trimmer here. A little bit of a boost out of that one. Not bad. Got a little bit out of it. But chances are the radio's uh, sensitivity, if you like, really hasn't changed. I've just moved the IF frequency to uh, the IF uh, resonant point of the IF transformers to where it should be. So the next thing on the list is to do the... Yeah, I better read up here. Before I do that, I just realized I had the radio on restricted power, not on full power. Yeah, now i got to double check those. They're not likely to be a problem at all. 
Okay, just doing it in reverse order now. I just squeaked a bit more out of that one. Okay, that's two trimmers done. Now, so just putting the radio up on. Whoops, I bumped that one. Oh, I got a little more out of that. The last one. Here we go. Okay, here's a, uh, the variation in line voltage from, say, 90, 95 volts to 115. It doesn't do much to a radio except make it a little louder normally, but certainly during an alignment we should have full power on it, just to be sure. Okay, now the next thing is connect signal generator output to antenna and ground, dial up 1730. So let's, let's first dial up 1730. Okay, 1730 there. And reconnect the signal generator to antenna and ground. So, oh my gosh, I still had had the radio attached to the outdoor antenna. Signal generator from there. Stick it there. Let's turn down the. Well, the output was very low on the signal generator already. I think we should remove this connection from the radio. Good show. Oh, that's not a good show at all. That was stupid. Now I gotta put that back on. This is the AVC line. There we are. Okay, good show. <laughs> hey, I made a mistake and realized it right away. That's great. That's fantastic. Um, I'm so excited about that, I've lost track of what I'm doing. Okay, set the tuning gang at minimum. So that would be plates wide open. Okay, so that's plates on the tuning capacitor are wide open now. And uh, that's supposed to be 1730, I think. I want to adjust C23, which is the broadcast oscillator, C23. Okay, can I spot that quickly? Okay, i got to hunt down C23 here. Okay, so I've got the uh, radio connected now. Uh, well, it's connected the same. I've tipped it down so I can get it the various adjustments here and uh, so I've got the capacitor wide open and I got the signal generator at uh, 1707 1730 and oddly enough I got a gigantic ABC voltage here gigantic being all of uh, three and a half volts that's more than have a look at that. Um, so, uh, what's going on here? I'm going to there. You can see the frequency. So that's I'm going to change the uh, signal generator frequency. I'm going to doing nothing to the AVC voltage. So it's not from this signal I'm feeding into the antenna. Tune the radio here. Tune the radio. What's up here? Look at that. My signal generator? No. Oh my 
gosh. We got uh, ABC voltage rising for no good reason here. I can hear the radio quiet under it. What, 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 what's going on here? stuck here. Why would there be ABC voltage where there is nothing being tuned in? The antenna is connected to my signal generator. Let me... Okay, it's no longer connected. The antenna is just hanging here open. It's connected to nothing. show everything. So I'm tuned at I'm tuned at the top of the band right now, 1730 I guess it is. As I tune down oh, what's going on here? Okay, we'll switch bands. AM radio band. We have no antenna, of course. Let's put on the outdoor antenna here. 518. Yeah, that works. Okay. You see the ABC working just fine. All the way across. Top end, there's nothing going on. With the ABC, back to short wave. ABC voltage shows up and quiets the radio. Ah, uh, what is doing that? Uh, you know what? I've got all these 6SA7 tubes sitting here. Just on a whim, let's change the. Uh, 6SA7. And we'll just see if that doesn't fix this. Can't imagine how, but it's too easy. You gotta do it. Okay, so I shut the power off. We'll, uh... Now, the uh, tube I'm gonna put in is untested. I don't know for sure that any of these three replacement tubes work. Put that one there. Double check it's 6SA7. Okay. Let's flip on the radio. that voltage. Tune the radio exactly the same. is not reacting well to uh, signals coming in either. Seems to have just got a life of its own here. Lots of volume now.
tuned back up to the end of the band and the AVC comes in. And with the AVC voltage that high, the radio goes quiet. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, right. I'm out of the uh, pan and into the fire here. I don't know what to think of that. Some kind of alignment thing that's a mile off. I, I had trouble understanding that. This is kind of a feedback oscillation thing. I think there's some kind of oscillation that's making it, let's see, for this, for this to generate an ABC voltage, there has to be a signal in the detector tube. And since it varies, whatever it is, varies with the tuning on the front end, it kind of has to be coming from down in here. I don't know what to think. Which is often the case, isn't it? I don't know what to think here. Uh, huh. I'm stuck. Mm. Stuck frozen. Okay. I'll stop for now and give this all some time to soak into my head. Maybe I'll come up with something. Maybe one of you knows an, a good idea of what might be going on here and uh, what I might be able to do about it. Hmm. Something new. It's always something new.